What's up guys, Brad Chapel here, Crappie Connection. Today I got you five top proven August crappie setups. One of the things that I've been doing the last couple of years since live sonar has come out is really fine tuning this technique. And honestly, I have really fallen in love doing this day in and day out. Um, and it's no secret, I've said it a lot during different podcasts and things, but day in and day out, one of the first things I'm gonna try is gonna be cast into these brush piles using live scope. It's very productive, but also, it takes some fine tuning to really get it dialed in and catch crappie to do it day in and day out like I'm able to do it. But I'm gonna show you my setup here and, you know, just going right back to this B&M 75th series combo here. It's just a really good rod. Everybody can pick them up, use them pretty easily and they catch crappie nonstop. This pole here is probably caught, you know, a couple hundred at least this summertime. So it's definitely a, a proven rod and reel setup to go out there and catch crappie with. And this particular setup is, is very basic, but I'm using a 1 8 Moglo uh, jig head. And this color right here is called Patriot. It's just a, a really natural tone bait color. And on the bottom of the setup, I'm using a 1 64th Bobby Garland itty bit jig head. And I want that smaller profile on the back of this jig, just for the main reason that these, these fish are really full and they're not really always aggressively feeding during the daytime, especially when I'm finding them piled up on brush piles and stumps. So I'm really trying to entice them and get their attention with this bigger bait the baby shad, and then on the back side, you know, this little bitty swimmer is just kind of like somebody offering you a snack or a peppermint. It's just something that's coming by them that they can't really resist. And I'm putting them right in their face. One of the keys to, to doing this for me is as I'm casting them out, you know, I'm bringing them to those brush piles. I want that bait to be a little bit above that brush pile, and then as I'm getting closer, I'm wanting that bait to drop down into them, or just right above them, and kind of just tickling it when I'm coming across it. I'm not moving this pole a whole lot. I'm more or less just having it vibrate a good bit as I'm bringing it back in, as I'm reeling it. So I'm just vibrating it back in. A lot of times, I'll see these bites more than I'll actually feel them. So if you see a fish come up and actually make a big lunge toward it, they're sucking in these little itty bit swimmers and they're not really trying to just smoke them like a big three inch bait or anything. So they're just sucking them in. So a lot of times you're not even gonna feel these bites. So you just gotta trust what you're seeing and go ahead and set the hook. But casting to brush piles is definitely a great way to catch these lethargic and these full crappie out on the lake. My second thing that I, I've been known to do for many years now, and I still love doing it. I can take this technique and put anybody in the boat with me and go catch crappie. And it's trolling crankbaits. You know, it kind of goes back to really for me, how I really begun uh, crappie fishing. And I'm talking 15, 20 years ago, I got into crappie fishing and it was in the summertime. So I kind of had to figure out what could I go out there and do and uh, really learn a body of water and learn how to do it. And, you know, this is definitely a proven tactic for me, technique for me, but I'm using a b and Bucks Pro Staff trolling poles. And I'm using anywhere from eight foot all the way up to really 20 foot would be ideal. But I like to have about a four foot spacing. So ideally you can start out with an eight foot, 12 foot, 16, and 20. And you can imagine if your boat's six foot wide or however wide your boat is, and you put out another 40 foot of coverage. So you're covering, you know, 40 to 50 feet of water at the very least in a water column as you're coming through. 
Now, I really look for areas that are holding bait fish that are balled up. Uh, a lot of times during the summertime, you'll see bait balls, but they're just really loosely scattered. That's not really an area that I want to troll my crankbaits through. I'm going to really try to key in on areas that I can see bait balls that are clustered up together, and then I can see the fish sitting directly up underneath them on my down image or, or whatever, 2D sonar or anything like that. If I see these fish sitting at, let's say, 12 feet up underneath these bait balls. I want my crankbaits to run roughly about 11 feet. So I want them about a foot over these crappie. And using a app called Precision Trolling App, you can look up Bandit 300, 10 pound line or whatever line you're using, and I'll talk about the line, and set them out according to the line counter to that particular length. And start your trolling. Now, my trolling speed is typically anywhere from 1.5 all the way up to 1.8. Um, that seems to be the, the magic speeds for me, myself. Uh, like I said, I've been doing this technique for many years and this particular color is called Popsicle and it is a Bandit 300. And I'm using snap swivels. This is just a number 12 snap swivel just in case I get a bite on a, let's say a white crankbait, I can easily change it over and continue catching fish. But this color right now, day in and day out, is always a good one to go ahead and throw out. And that's the Bandit 300 Popsicle. Now the line, you might ask why we have bright colored pink line and another reel that I've got sitting here is green color line. One of the things that I really like to do more than any other technique probably is alternate the color of my braided lines. Uh, it really helps me whenever I do have a tangle. Let's say if you catch a big catfish and, and he runs into your first pole and you caught him on your second. Undoing two different color lines is a whole lot easier compared to using the same color line. Now the highest viz line, I'm gonna use it for the outside poles for sure. And then I might go down to the green line, but one of the big tips I will say is it, the longest pole that you're using, use it with the highest visible color braided line you're using. As far as the line goes, I'm using K9, and this is braided line. This is a 20 pound test, and it's got the diameter probably about an eight pound. So it's a real thin line, and I like this braided line. One, you can see these rod tips, especially on these B&M trolling poles, just sit there and vibrate and vibrate. And it really brings my attention on any kind of trash gets on the bait or anything like that. I'm really able to identify it extremely quickly. And plus, if you get hung up on, let's say, a brush pile, uh, your chances of getting that crankbait back is a whole lot more if you're using braided lines. It's just stronger. Um, but another key advantage of using braided fishing line would be that you can dive deeper using less amount of line out just because of the diameter. And like mono, it tends to float a little bit and it's a little bit thicker, so it's gonna dive a little bit deeper in the water column. Uh, another really good tip that I'll give you about pulling crankbaits is, and using line counter reels is, you want to kind of keep in mind where the line touches the water. And so if you have your poles tilted up, let's say they're four feet off the surface and, and the line's sticking up 12 feet behind your, your boat and, and to where it touches the water, the actual depth that they're going to go is from where that line touches the water until, the, until it hits the bait. So if you're trying to achieve a, a 60 foot line length and you've got 12 foot sticking above it you're not going to reach that depth because a lot of it's just sticking in the air so always keep that in mind actually it matters from where the line touches the water until the bait so i always try to have my pole tips i'm gonna say 10 to 12 inches above the water that way i know i'm not having about about two to three feet of line actually behind the poles before it touches the water so keep your pole tips low and that'll help you uh, 
really control your depth a little bit better. All right, guys, my number three proven tactic for catching August crappie would be casting to them in open water. Now this particular setup here is a Todd Huckabee Dingo, and it's about a seven foot pole, medium light action, medium action, but I'm able to get back out there and actually cast a, a really good distance. And I'm trying to achieve anywhere from 30 feet to about 45 feet whenever I'm really targeting open water fish. On this setup, I'm using Roadrunner sickle style jig heads. Uh, I like sickles whenever I'm not gonna plan on using any kind of live bait on, on the lure itself. But I'm using a 1 8 sickle style jig head, bladed jig head with these one and a half inch beaver bottom baits. I want something heavier that once I cast it, I can see it going down to those fish. Another good thing for me, as far as using bladed jigs, using live sonar, you can actually see the flash coming off of the, the jig heads themselves. So I like using bladed jig heads with a 1 8 whenever I'm casting to these open water fish. Now this particular setup, like I said, I'm using the beaver bottom baits. And one of the things I really like about using the beaver bottom when it comes to these open water fish for myself is how this flap of this tail. And how I like to see it is, as I'm dropping that bait down to them, I can bump this bait, I guess that's a good terminology, and it creates that water turbulence going down. And it's just something else to try to draw these attention to these fish. Now, I always tell everybody, once these fish recognize these baits, what it you want to do at that point is stop twitching it and just keep a steady retrieve away from that fish. And you might even increase it. So you just kind of play with the retrieve, but one of the things you never want to do is to slow it down. At that point, 99% of the fish are going to turn around and swim away. So as you're coming, you see a fish suspended at 30 feet, you're going to cast the 35, let the baits drop down, and just keep it right above them. And right when you get right in front of them, do a little twerk, do a little flop, and let these blades work and these flopping of the beaver bottom baits and steady retrieve away from them, and they're going to come back behind it and inhale it just a great August tactic to get out there and catch some August crappie. All right guys, my top four in proven tactics to go out and catch August crappie, and you know what I'm probably gonna say if you know anything about me, will be long line trolling. It's still just a great tactic to do even in the summertime. The only thing different that I'm gonna do probably compared to other times of the year is I'm actually probably gonna speed up some more. And so in turn, my number one setup to use and try for you guys was gonna be two one eight ounce <clears throat> jig heads. And I'm using right here, one eighth ounce Bobby Garland Moglo jig heads. Now I've got these tied about three foot apart. This is my top jig setup. Let me see if I can get it from flopping. But it's about three to four inches from the main line tied, a big overhand loop knot, very simple knot to tie. And that just kind of keeps this bait as it's being trolled away from your main line. And as far as the bait color of choice that's just gonna be proven for me everywhere I go, will be Keystone Candy, and that's a Bobby Garland stroller. And you can see what just makes this bait so magical for me is at the end of the bait, that big knob, and that just creates a lot of turbulence as it's getting drugged through the water. My speeds of choice is gonna be from 1.2 all the way, really, I'm gonna say 1.4. In that key range, you should be going roughly about eight to 10 foot deep with this particular setup. I'm using six pound mono. 
a lot of different brands. Uh, Sulfex has just been a really good line for me, no matter what technique I'm doing as far as using mono. The poles of choice are just like pulling crankbaits. So you can use a, your same poles that you're using when it comes to pulling crankbaits. You can use the exact same ones for long line and jigs. The ideal setup for me would be eight foot, 12 foot, 16 and 20 which 20s is a it's a whole lot of pole but it just helps you create a, a wider path as you're coming through the water column same thing as far as areas to troll during the month of august look for areas that have fish suspended and that are really has clusters of bait fish that are afraid and, and hovering together and target these baits to go right in that line. A lot of times, like I said, for me, it's gonna be around that 10 foot mark and you can kind of play with your speed and to get that depth achieved. Uh, another good trick for pulling jigs in the summertime, as you're trolling along, take your remote and just tap it to the left three times. Let that boat start taking that turn, tap it three times to the right. Let it slowly go back. So in other words, I'm just having this boat slowly twist left and right, and that causes these baits to speed up and slow down, speed up and slow down. And as we know from casting with live sonar, a lot of times if they see a bait starting to retrieve a little bit faster away from them, they're gonna come up and inhale it. So it's just a, another really good way to catch these August crappie, especially in lakes that they like to suspend above that thermocline. Thermocline should be setting up right now. You know, another thing about thermocline I'll just bring, bring up briefly is that it can come and go. So if you have a big storm roll up, your thermocline probably would dissipate. But if you have a couple, I'm gonna say two or three days of really hot weather, light, light winds, you most likely always have a thermocline set up in that lake. But the number four tactic setups to catch August Cropping. Love doing it. Got a long line troll. My number fifth, which is probably the hottest technique in the crappie fishing world at this point. It is proven deadly no matter what part of the country that you're fishing in and that's chasing open water crappie. And I'm gonna kind of show you my setup. We'll probably talk about this setup and some of these other ones every single month, but this is a, a pretty unique deal that I got on this rod here. This is a B&M Black Diamond 16 foot pole. This pole has a pretty light tip to it. I like using no more than a half ounce weight on it. It just, it's a little bit heavier after that. On this setup here, I've got a crappie magnet, one eighth ounce, and that is the Brandon Smith series jig head. And I've got it paired up with a top hat jigs, heel topper, guppy gobbler jig body. I just absolutely love this pearl and sparkle with the chartreuse tail. And like I said, the Brandon Smith series, just these, the uh, elongated head of this just really uh, helps pick it up on sonar for me. Another really good thing about the eye hole is you just take your crappie magnet scent and just stick it in there. And now you have scent infused inside your bait. I like to have my egg sinker 12 inches or so up above my body itself. And this is just a half ounce egg sinker and I'm using two bobber stops on the bottom and one bobber stop up top. And it just keeps that weight pegged in place. I'm using uh, fluorocarbon whenever it comes to chasing open water crappie. That fluorocarbon does not float at all. It sinks, so it just helps get your bait down a little bit faster. And I'm using usually a 15 to 20 pound fluorocarbon to achieve this because it's, you guys see them, they're just setting a hook and slinging them in the boat. But 
definitely a tactic that we'll talk about every month more than likely. And it's the hottest thing going when it comes to sonar, live sonar, catching crappie, is chasing them down up in this open water. All right, guys, that kind of rounds up my top five proven crappie tactics, setups for the month of August. I will do this every single month. I can't wait to do more of them. This is gonna be a fun deal for everybody. Make sure you follow, hit subscribe, turn it for notifications on. Join us for Tuesday nights, today's bite, where I discuss exactly how I'm catching them. All across the country, we get great fish reports as well. I got Dustin McDaniel helping me out with this every week. It's a really fun thing, so make sure you hit subscribe, follow, and look for Crappie Connection gear on Crappie Forever.